England has a store of treasure. Welcome wait to London for the whole wide world. When the world and his wife want to go to town, they join the glamour. They share the glamour of London. London, thou art the flower of cities all, gem of all joy, jasper of jocundity. The flower of cities all. It spreads itself at the feet of a new arrival, the web of bricks and mortar that Londoners have built. This has been their city for close on 2,000 years now. Their numbers have grown with it, and now they swarm in Trafalgar Square like the pigeons, with the National Gallery behind them to remind them of the arts, and the statue of Nelson to recall heroic deeds. Wherever in the world they go, in their cockney hearts, home is always London. I have traveled this wide world over. I have seen what the world has to give. And now I've come back to the city I know. The place where I once used to live. And now that I've returned. As far as I'm concerned. I know that I can do without London and get along very well. I don't want Piccadilly, you can have my share. I'm tired of dodging pigeons in Trafalgar Square. Oh, I can do without London, but can London do without me? <laughs> I'm only kidding, cause I'm a part of all London, and I'm mighty happy to be. Although I'm always kidding and I shoot a line, you've only got to listen to this voice of mine to know that I'm a part of all London, and all London is a part of me. Whether it's watching the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace or swirling round with the big red buses in Piccadilly Circus, the streets of London are full of people. This is one of the world's crossroads and someone's sure to tell you that if you stand here long enough you'll see everyone you've ever known. Recognize any old friends? There always seem to be people gathered about Piccadilly's famous landmark, the statue of Eros, the god of love. You're looking at one of the oldest pieces of London still standing, for the foundations of this, the old city wall, were built by the Romans. Beyond is the new London, the towering blocks for the city's business houses, old and new. They ring the changes like the bells of the old song, but old or new, they are all part of London. Oranges and lemons, say the bells of St. Lemon. You owe me five farthings, say the bells of St. Lemon. Oranges and lemons, say the bells of St. Lemon. St. Paul's Cathedral, Christopher Wren's masterpiece. Its dome still soaring above the surrounding rooftops. <laughs> place to live that anyone might be proud of, 
where London's County Council is making a new London of the future. Westminster Abbey, where the kings and queens of England have been crowned for 900 years. New Scotland Yard still whispers of the world's first police force and the mysteries of the CID, the Criminal Investigation Department. Old Father Thames and the Tower of London, once a Roman fortress, royal castle, prison, storehouse of the crown jewels. No other place in London can show you so much history within its walls. Will you pay me, say the bells of old baby, when I grow rich, say the bells of shortage. When will that be, say the bells of set me, I'm sure I don't know, says the great bell of Fine sunny morning and what to do? The answer might be to go out and look for something you've always wanted. A hat, a house, a piece of Georgian silver, a browse round a department store. The only problem is that of choice. Or perhaps how to get the things home. I was a walking down the town, a walking in the West End, looking for the best in for to get the pint of beer when I stopped dead. He come into me head. Today for day, the wife and I been married forty years. I could see her sitting there, saying it was rotten. The thing that I'd forgotten, our anniversary seemed I'd better look around to get her something extra special that she'd like to have from me. First, I bought a dozen leather monkeys. I'd asked them for a couple, but they wouldn't split the set. Then I saw a solid silver gong too. They told me it belonged to Mari Antoinette. Up the street, I bought a bit of carving. Half a dozen pictures in a smudgy sort of style. Next thing was a puppy with a cute face. A wacky and heavy suitcase made of crocodile. A night's balls, a pair of jester drawers. Had funny little handles on and decorated doors. I bought one, oh, it must have weighed a ton. I don't know how I use it, but it looks a lot of fun. The top's all made of sea green marble, all the way from Rome. Now, the only thing that worries me and flusters me and flurries me is how to get the flipping lot home. You may be looking for something to fill the inner man. If so, welcome to the Temple of Greed. Anything that anyone ever thought of eating has been gathered from the corners of the earth under this roof. Now to tickle your appetite, food fit for a king. Don't mind the season or time of year, summer, winter, or spring. Lava take partridges, haggis, and quail. From England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Rapish from Brittany, never an end to this gluttonous litany. Melons and mangoes from far Barbados. Lyric and candy from Mexico. Lime from Jamaica. Or avocado, ginger and pepper to give you a glow. Salt, salmon and caviar. Oysters, turbot and wings. If you're still interested in food, you needn't just buy the stuff. The Mayfair Hotel is only one of the many places which are only too glad to let you eat it. You can try the roast beef of Old England or Scotch salmon, the best from these islands or from across the sea. Yes, there are all kinds of places in which to settle that deal over cigars or make the most of a crepe Suzette. Peach, brandy and bet. What 
for the eight million or so Londoners who aren't lunching in a plush restaurant, there are plenty of other places in which to eat pleasantly. On a bright sunny day, you might find several score of them in one or other of the pretty riverside public houses, where anyone can share a plate of food with the swans and wash it down with half a pint of bitter. The River Thames has always been the main highway running through London. The city owes its existence to the river. The first Britons built a settlement there because it was the last place where the river could be forded before the open sea. The Romans built the first London Bridge. Once there was a forest of rigging along the Thames, and to this day the brown sail of a Thames barge can be seen now and then. Skipper Bob Roberts knows his own songs of London the river and sea shanties of the old days when there were fewer bridges and watermen ferried their passengers from shore to shore in rowing boats. Have you ever heard tell of the young London watermen who from Blackbriars to regular ply? And he feathered his oars with such skill and dexterity Pleasing each maid and delighting each eye And he sang so sweet, he sang so merry That couples all jostled to hire his wherry And he became a fairy fairy But he could not find a true love of his own The Blackfriars Waterman and all his brothers are little more than a memory now, but the river still holds its place. Water buses can take you for a trip down the Thames, giving a new perspective to old landmarks. The Tower of London, St Paul's Cathedral, Westminster. Till there came a young goose girl from Stratford, St Mary, and she wanted taking to Farringdon Fair. But she had not a hate to pay for a wary and stood on the steps in a pretty despair. But she sang so sweet, she sang so merry, he took her and all of her geese in his wary, and her pretty face was the fair for a fairy, and rode her across the Farringdon Fair. They were married next May time at Stratford and Mary, and now they had watermen one, two, three, four. And they fed in their oars with such skill and dexterity, throwing the people from shore to shore. And they sing so sweet, they sing so merry. Couples all jostled the higher, they're wary, and everyone goes by the black friar's ferry, while he stays at home with a love of his own. The river brought the sea up to London. The sea brought the whole wide world. Galleons, barks, full rigged ships sailed from here in search of adventure. The merchantmen and liners of today follow in their wake. The last of the tea clippers, the Cutty Sark, has found her final dock in Greenwich, where the sea and ships have long been the main business of the place. Greenwich Reach has been a stretch of the Thames familiar to generations of seamen, and down on the bank is the Royal Naval College, in buildings designed for it by Christopher Wren. On the hill above stands the most famous observatory in the world. Every clock on Earth still ticks to Greenwich mean time. And the zero meridian of the globe runs through the grounds, so that even the smallest person can have one foot in the east and one in the west. In a wing of Kensington Palace, you can learn more of London's past. The Victoria and Albert and the British Museum are world famous. But this is London's own museum. Here you can see what Londoners wore down the ages, how they amused themselves, how they lived. Look into Queen Victoria's cradle. Look into the eyes of the first Queen Elizabeth. This effigy was carried at her funeral more than 350 years ago. 
Old London is recreated here when the Thames froze and a frost fair on the river competed with Shakespeare's Globe Theatre on the Southwark Bank. Londoners have a long tradition of entertainment, a liking for music and drama which continues up to today. The world's first regular television service was started in London and an old ballad which came to London with the weavers of Spitalfields finds a new setting under the studio lights. Once there was a bachelor who lived all alone He worked at the weaver's trade And the only, only thing he ever did wrong Was to woo a fair young maid to keep her from the foggy, foggy dew. One night she knelt close by his side when he was fast asleep. She threw her arms around his neck and then began to weep. She wept, she cried, she almost died. Alas, what could he do? Hold her into bed and covered up her head to keep her from the foggy, foggy dew. And so he wooed her in the springtime, right through the autumn too. And the only, only thing he ever did wrong was to keep her from the foggy, foggy dew. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. Even in the center of the city, Londoners can watch the changing seasons in the parks. Flowers, trees, and water have something new to offer at all times of the year. keep out the foggy, foggy dew is in a London pub. The cut glass and gleaming mahogany of the Red Lion near St. James's will put a sparkle in anyone's eye. A little of what you fancy always does you good. The barmaids have their own brand of rye back chat, which can close the mouth of the most argumentative customer or make the shyest air his opinions like a politician. These elaborate interiors have been called the great Victorian contribution to the architecture of drink. They're full of corners where you can stand and sip and get in the mood for a show, whether it's to be Covent Garden or the Palladium.
and pleasure. is an occasion for somebody, whether it's a dinner for two over a bottle of wine in Soho, or a gala premiere in full evening dress and decoration, where the famous await the arrival of Her Majesty the Queen. really say it ever gets dark in London's West End, the theatre names light up the night, making their own patterns of invitation and promise. But by and large, Londoners can make their own entertainment. The Waterman's Arms is far away from the lights of the West End, among the docks and warehouses of the Isle of Dogs. Here, the real tradition of music hall is as strong as ever it was. All together now. If you were the only boy in the world, and I were the only girl. Now, come on. All the heavens were burning in the world today. still not ready for bed, you might try going to a nightclub. Big hotels and intimate supper rooms are open to the wide awake. You can hear a song of London there too. The romantic, torchy song of the 20th century sophisticate. That certain night, the night we met, there was magic abroad.